Hello, college algebra. So last, we got into chapter five and the first topic was inverse functions. We were looking at inverse functions. Uh, the reason we're looking at inverse functions is the next, uh, in this chapter, we study two very famous inverse functions, the exponential function and his inverse, the logarithm function. So two functions that are related, they're cousins, they're inverse functions of each other, two different functions uh, are studied here in chapter five. Um, so let's start with the inverse function. Technically, this is section 5-2, and I mean, I'm sorry, exponential functions. So what makes it an exponential function is the variable now is up in the exponent. We've, we've dealt with, with, uh, with a variable in the base, and the exponent could be squared or cubed, but that's, that's different. Um, when, the x, when the variable is up in the exponent and the base is a number, we refer to this as the base, um, then it's an exponential function. And so let's plot some points and see what this is like. Um, so I made a little chart. You know, let's start with the middle here. If you plug in a zero, you got two to the zero. We should remember maybe what that is. Uh, anything to the zero is one. It's kind of a funny rule. I could prove it to you later. But anything to the zero power is a one. So when I plug in a zero, two to the zero is one. Let's keep going. When you plug in a one, you get two to the first. That's two. When you plug in a 2, you get 2 squared. That's 2 times 2. That's 4. When you plug in a 3, you get 2 cubed. 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. <clears throat> when you plug in a negative 1, you could use your calculator. You need to learn how to use your calculator. Um, sometimes, let me just tell you, you have this X to the Y button or Y to the X button. And what you do is you tell it, you type in the 2, and that's the base. Then you hit this button. And then you type in the negative 1, and that's the exponent. Anyway, but what it means, you should know what it means. It means 1 over 2 to the first. A, a negative exponent takes the whole base and everything and puts it in the denominator. So one, so that's a 1 half. What about 2 to the negative 2? Again, you could try it on a calculator. A calculator will help big time in this chapter. But anyway, that is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. So here it is. I want to plot these points and get a beautiful, get a picture of this function. Um, but notice, I just want you to notice what's happening here. To get from one y to the next y, we multiply by two. We multiply by two. Multiply by two. Multiply by two. The next y is 16, 32, 64, 128. I mean, it grows very quickly. It exponentiates. <clears throat> uh, so if I plot these points, 0, 1, that happens to be the y-intercept there, 0, 1. When x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, it's a 4. When x is 3, it's way up here, it's an 8. When x was negative 1, remember it was a half. When x was negative 2, it was a fourth. If I kept going this way, it would be an eighth, a sixteenth. And so it gets really close to the x-axis here. And you might not think that's great exponential growth, but, but, but this x-axis then acts like an asymptote. So it, it approaches the x-axis out here, never touches, never crosses. It's called y equals zero, the x-axis, and it acts like what we call a horizontal asymptote. Uh, we haven't talked about that much yet in this class. Uh, it shows up with these exponential functions. The, an asymptote is a kind of a guide. The graph approaches it, never touches, never crosses it. Um, over here, it keeps going, and it, this is where you see what's called the exponential growth. Uh, sorry about that. And so it gets very steep, grows exponentially. And we do refer to these as, this kind of graph, as exponential growth. Exponential growth. Uh, you know, I hate to say it, it's sad and scary, but currently we're dealing with this damn virus, COVID-19, and it's, uh, 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 that's what's happening. We've got this exponential growth. We're all passing it around to each other. Uh, so it'd be nice if we could slow this baby down uh, and let it, let it taper off. But real exponential growth that we're studying in this chapter doesn't taper off. It just grows crazy. Um, <clears throat> Again, you multiply by 2, 
and that's the base. The thing you multiply by every time is the base. So we can do this with a lot of different bases, and they don't always have to grow. Uh, let's just let's do another. I'm going to erase this one. I'm going to erase this one. I'm going to look at a different function here. I'm going to look at uh, f of x equals uh, one-third to the x. So if I made a little chart, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, again. Uh, let's start with 0. Plug in a 0. What's anything to the 0? It's a 1. Anything to the 0 is a 1. You know, my base this time is a 1 third. Uh, since my base is a 1 third, um, <clears throat> I keep multiplying by one-third. Let's try it. Plug in a one. When you plug in a one, you get one-third to the first. That's one-third. When you plug in a two, you get one-third squared. That is one-ninth. So what just happened? I'm multiplying by a one-third. I multiply by, and if I multiply by another one-third, I got one-twenty-seventh. You know, when you multiply by a number less than one, you don't have growth. These y values are decreasing. We have exponential decay. So that's another, that let's just, if I plot this point, 0, 1, uh, that was this point. When I plugged in a 1, I got a 1 -third. When I plugged in a 2, I got a 1 -ninth. I got a 1 27th. So this graph is not growing. It's decaying, decreasing exponentially toward this asymptote. There's still this asymptote at y equals 0. It won't touch or cross. It'll get close, close. It'll just get cl infinitely closer to 0. Now over here, it is, uh, when you plug in a negative one, again, this is where a calculator is kind of helpful. I mean, what that means is that's, a, that's a, a, th a three to the positive one, a one third to the negative one, and so we get a three. And when I plug in a negative two, one third to the negative two, uh, I'm gonna get a nine. You could say it's a 1 in the numerator and a 3 to the negative 2, and then you move this up and you call it 3 to the positive 2. There's different ways. This is a, you got to review your exponent rules, uh, but negative 2 is 9. So, you know, it is exponentially growing this way, but you don't call that growing. We don't go backwards. We, we, we read left to right, and left to right, this is an exponentially decreasing function which we call exponential decay. So, two big types of exponential functions, exponential growth, exponential decay. Um, they come in various forms. I guess one thing you might have just learned is if the base is bigger than one, that's growth, because you're multiplying by something bigger than one. If the base is less than one, it's decay, because you're multiplying by something less than one. It's going to decrease. But there's this little twist. Let me show you a different way to decay. Watch this. Um. <clears throat> when I put a negative sign on that exponent, now my base is bigger than 1, but when I put a negative sign on that exponent, um, that switches things up. Maybe you remember the old shifts and transformations. Maybe you remember that this negative sign on the x flips the graph sideways. And flipping the graph sideways would take good old exponential growth and turn it into exponential decay. So, sorry, maybe I should have This would be 3 to the positive x, but when you put a negative on it, it's 3 to the negative x. It's decay. So you could plot points and watch that happen. Uh, but I'm saying there's two ways to exponentially decay. These are actually the same graph here. Uh, <clears throat> so, so that's good to know. We, all, we often put a negative sign up there. <clears throat> now, you know, I could have been like, I like to ask you for the x-intercept. Can you tell me the x-intercept? Well, you realize the concept of this asymptote, and you heard what I said. It approaches this and never touches or crosses. There is no x-intercept. So if I ask you, what's the x-intercept? There's none. Uh, what's the y-intercept? Zero, one, right there. Um, now, I can make it have an x-intercept. I could shift this thing down. Uh, you know, it's easy to shift something down. Subtract 10. The whole graph shifts down. The asymptote shifts down. And now you would have an x-intercept. Uh, let's not do that right now. 
uh, but watch out for shifting. You can shift the graphs up and down, and we learned about that before in this class. Um, there's a lot more to say here in 5.2 about exponential functions. I'm going to hit pause, and then I'll, I'll come back here.